check on the bond market now, which is becoming the story of the afternoon, with the 10-year yield going back to where it was before the Fed meeting yesterday. There it is at 1.48%. It spiked above one and a half after the decision. It is back to where we began. Rick Santelli standing by with more on this. What do you make of it, Rick? You know, Kelly, this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, yesterday's knee-jerk reaction to the upside or how even the equities acted makes sense. There was a lot of issues with the stock plots that might have made many investors a little surprised that we pulled some of this forward. But in the really big picture, I think most real fixed income portfolio managers and large institutions understand the notion of really believing that rate hikes aren't coming to 2024 or 23 point them forward. It's about outcomes. And with a heated economy at 7% GDP, most likely you're going to see many of these issues come towards the front much sooner in a time frame. But today in particular, the dollar index being so strong has put downward pressure on commodities. And if you were to put a CRB index or lumber prices or grain prices or gold, especially gold prices, next to the 10-year treasuries, you'll see the correlation there. So as we see some of these inflationary uh, issues moderate to some extent, it is having a soothing effect on interest rates. But that does not mean that there isn't going to be some bite, some residual bite to inflation down the road. We don't know. But what we do know is commodities, whether it's China, whether it is the strong dollar, which, of course, leads us to the softer commodity prices. We're not exactly sure what the catalyst is, but the relationship between watching the commodity price come down strong dollar and lower interest rates is something to pay attention to. And I do believe getting back above 160 is going to be very difficult. So if many of the listeners and viewers use that as a pivot, as we've been talking about for the last eight weeks, right. it really does keep you on the right side of the 10-year. So, Rick, let me just follow up with this uh, for a moment. Here's what's so different about this environment. How We've been spending all year, basically, so far, talking about the risk of the taper tantrum, right? You know, back when Bernanke first talked about the taper happening within a few meetings— we saw the 10-year almost double in yield. Again, this was way back in 2014. We've all been talking about what happens when the Fed starts to, you know, make the same kind of remarks. Now, Powell was not close to that yesterday, but it's obviously a hawkish take that the market has walked away from this meeting with. Why is that sending the 10-year lower and not higher? In other words, what is it about the Fed's hawkishness yesterday that's sending bond yields lower as opposed to the kind of hawkishness that would send bond yields up? Well, first of all, the, the entire question is predicated that we should put significance to when we look at a screen and see a, a 157 yield or a 148 yield. And I will continue to contend that looking at a 10-year under 150 or a 10-year 167, all of those are distorted views. And the dynamics of the logistics of who's buying, who's selling, and how the yield curve, in other words, that five-year yield that Mike Santoli has been talking about has mm -hmm. been very firm. Long dated is more appealing to some of the buyers, especially global buyers. And I think you're going to continue to see this dynamic. As a matter of fact, I think some of the worst curve steepening might be in the rear view mirror. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.